Hallelujah to the Lord God Jesus we say thank you for another night of prayer Jesus we honor you Jesus we give you glory let someone worship the name of the Lord let someone give him glory and appreciate him for his goodness for his love for his kindness father we say thank you we say thank you for what you're doing in our lives we say thank you for what you're doing in our midst Jesus we say thank you Jesus we say thank you Jesus we say thank you hallelujah to the Lord God Jesus we say thank you Jesus we say thank you thou art worthy O God to receive glory thou art worthy O God to receive honor Jesus we worship you we give you glory we give you praise you're wonderful you're wonderful you're beautiful you're marvelous Jesus we say thank you the Bible says unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given and his name shall be called wonderful he said wherefore is he that thou ask after my name seeing it is secret seeing it is wonderful Jesus we say thank you his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty God the everlasting father the prince of peace the Bible says of the increase of his government there shall be no end Jesus we say thank you for who you are Jesus we say thank you for your mighty power Jesus we say thank you because the adversary is subdued Jesus we say thank you because the evil ones are broken into pieces Jesus we say thank you blessed be the name of the Lord from everlasting to everlasting blessed be the name of the Lord and let his name be praised Jesus we say thank you hallelujah to the Lord God hallelujah to the Lord God Jesus we say thank you blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus we say thank you be thou exalted O God be thou exalted O God Jesus we say thank you hallelujah 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 to the Lord God hallelujah to the Lord God Jesus we say thank you Jesus we say thank you blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus, we honor you. Jesus, we honor you. Jesus, we honor you. Let someone appreciate him. Let someone give him glory. Jesus, we say thank you. Thank you for what you've been doing through these meetings. Thank you for what you're going to do tonight. Thank you for the revelation and the prayers from Genesis chapter 1. What a deep moment of prayers as we have been speaking unto creation and decreeing unto the cosmos. And the Lord has been hearing our prayers. The Lord has been revealing unto us great and mighty things that we do not know. The Bible says, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will answer thee and I will show unto you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Jesus, we say thank you for the revelation of great and mighty things. Jesus, we say thank you for the inspiration of your spirit, the inspiration of your word. Jesus, we say thank you for breaking yokes, for opening rams and opening porters and opening doors and opening prison gates. Jesus, we say thank you for breaking the chains of the lives of people. Jesus, we say thank you for delivering the oppressed, for liberating the captive. Jesus, we say thank you for what you're going to do tonight. Jesus, we say thank you. Be thou exalted, O God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, we say thank you. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. What a lovely moment of prayer. As we looked at the book of Genesis chapter 1, we've come up up to verse 25 now. And um, the last two series were uh, decreeing to the waters that the water should bring forth abundantly and that there should be healing to the waters of our lives the waters of our lives like Elisha went to the spring of the waters and the Bible says that he cast salt therein 
and as soon as he poured the salt to the spring of the waters, he said, Thus said the Lord, I have healed your waters. That was the prayer of yesterday night. It's already uploaded on the channel, and I will implore you to listen and pray. I have healed the waters of your life, that every spiritual contamination, environmental or generational, that has caused the waters of your life, the waters of your lineage to be polluted. The Lord God Almighty has sent for the river flowing from the from the from the altar and is flowed into the seas, into the ocean, is flowed into the desert, is flowed into your life, and is caused a healing and is caused an abundance to spring forth where there has been death. Hallelujah to the Lord. Lord God Jesus we give you praise for that moment of prayer and we pray that as many that will listen to this prayer their lives will be changed their lives will be transformed in the name of Jesus blessed be the name of the Lord you're progressing in this prayer again as we look at the book of Genesis chapter 1 what a deep moment of prayer many people would generally not use this as a form of prayer point but the Lord has revealed unto us because when you pray these words, it becomes it comes alive in you to you. It becomes real again to you. Many people will just read Genesis chapter one as a form of information to know what happened in the beginning. But these are deep mysteries that were programmed according to the speakings of the Almighty. When he said, Let there be, and there was. Hallelujah to the Lord God. Genesis chapter two chapter 1 verse 26 now we're looking at the apex of god's creation which is man himself the bible says and god said let us make man in our own in our image after our likeness hallelujah that's a, that's a, a handful there that will take us a long stretch if we want to break it down into the nitty-gritty of that statement let us make man this is the first time the plurality of the godhead is showing forth this is the first time we have the the the, the inner communications of the godhead where he says let us for them for the waters he said for the earth he said for beasts he said for for creeping things on the earth he said and God said and God said for the fishes of the sea and God said even when he blessed the fishes of the sea and commanded them to multiply and be fruitful and to fill the seas he never said let us but now is come to the apex of creation which is you and I God himself consulted and he said like Halloween let us make man let us make man I know we have made light we have made the firmament we have made the sun the moon the stars we have made great whales we are kapalo sharia kiza the creation is not complete until man is made the creation is not complete until that apex is cut into what are the things in your life that you have seen god do are you going to stop pursuing even when you have not yet achieved that pinnacle no God did not rest on the fifth day. God did not rest on the fifth day. The apex of creation is man. And he has to get to that point where he said, Let us make man in our own image. Again, this is the first time that any creation will carry the image of God. The fishes were not made in the image of God. The sun, the moon, the stars, the beasts, the trees, heads were not made in the image of God. But man, my goodness, 
they should make anyone tremble and as we're going to look at it very very critically we will be seeing the 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 the, the glory and the importance of this creation which is man 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 and when he says man it's the generic form because it says for the male and female created he them let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion my goodness can you imagine this god has made every other thing and then on the sixth day is making this creature which is man and the first thing he says is that let them have dominion over the fish of the sea that is the creation of the fifth day and over the fowl of the air on the fifth day itself and over the cattle well they make this also on the sixth day and over all the earth and over everything that creepeth upon the earth so even if that thing is not creeping so long as it was on the earth like um maybe um how would i put it now maybe waters yeah the waters were not creeping the land were not creeping it says over all the earth he has given man dominion if you look at the speed and the ease of creation and god said and it was so this time around he says let us make man in our own image after our likeness and let them have dominion and it gives the jurisdiction of that dominion in verse 27 so god created man this one he did not speak man into existence he created he created man in his own image in the image of god created he him male and female created he them this is what is going to span um, feel our prayers i presume yeah for the rest of this week and into next week because as soon as we are done with this series you will see your life in another dimension because as it was in the beginning when god made man and gave man dominion we have to step into that realm again through jesus christ our lord remember since adam fell since adam and eve fell they gave the license to the devil and man fell and came under the yoke and under the curse but in christ jesus we have been redeemed from the curse of the law in christ jesus he has restored unto us more blessings than adam lost yes more blessings better promises better covenant we have been given access to the holiest of all that holy communion that adam lost in the garden the veil of the temple has been rent in twain and we have been given access with boldness through grace and mercy and by the blood of jesus we may approach him that dwelleth in light yes we can approach him now through the blood of jesus and when he looks at us he no longer sees sin he sees the mercy he sees the blood of jesus and he sees forgiveness he sees purity he said though your sins 
face be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. He said, let us make man in our own image. In verse 28, he says, and God bless them and said unto them be fruitful hallelujah we will take all of this one after the other next week by the by the grace of god and multiply and replenish the earth that it is not only when you look at when you look at the book of um yeah genesis chapter 1 in verse 22 where god was blessing the creatures of the sea he says and god blessed them saying be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters of the sea and let the fowl multiply in the earth those were the creatures in the earth but this time around he was speaking to man in verse 28 and he said be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it it went further to tell man to subdue the earth and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth hallelujah this is dominion, dominion with jurisdiction, dominion with boundaries. It says unto man, be fruitful. We're going to start little by little and then we'll take it and proceed. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image my brother my sister let it be known unto you today that you are made in the image of God I don't care what the devil has told you I don't care what society and social media have told you I don't care what physics the laws of evolution have said this one was given directly from God let us make man in our image after our likeness whatever has reduced you from that glorious image is what we are going to deal with tonight we want the restoration of the image of god my god we want the restoration of the likeness of god he says as for me i will behold thy face in righteousness i will be satisfied when i awake with thy likeness that's in the book of psalms but before we read that passage in Psalm, let's yes, let's still go to Psalms chapter 8, hmm. verse 1. O oh Lord our God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Look at verse 3. When I consider thy heavens, the walk of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. He says, What is man that thou art mindful of him? What is man that you are mindful of him? When I look at the creation, when I look at the vast ocean, when I look at the seas, when I look at the at, at the land, how we stretch it forth, when I look at the vast vegetation, when I take a look at the universe, when I look at the skies, the sun, the moon, when I look at what has been discovered and what is still being discovered, I begin to wonder why man, what is man that thou art mindful of him? 
why will you have to consult and say, let us make man? Let us make man in our image. Why didn't you just create another being like the sun, the moon, and the stars? Why didn't you just create another being like the cattle or the great whales? Why is everything like the, the, the apex of your operation was in man? My goodness. The angels were made. Spirits, different kinds were made. But this one, in fact, there is no record. God does not deem it fit to highlight their creation. But we know that they were made because the Bible says, For by him all things consist. Whether they be visible or invisible. Yes. So man was made after the image and the likeness of God. In verse 4, he said, What is man in some age that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visitest him. He says, For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Can you imagine that? So if you think you have seen angels, or if you know anything about the angels as revealed from the word of God, he said this man was made only a little lower than the angels. In the interpretation of that passage, because as is evident from Hebrews chapter 2, it was a temporary operation. Man was made transiently a little lower than the angels. And he was crowned with glory and with honor. This is who you are. This is what you were made. This was the original intention and the purpose of God for your existence. You were made only a little lower than the angel for the time being that the laws and the principles of this earthly realm might be obeyed. It says, and you will be crowned with glory and with honor. Because he said, let us make man in our own image. After our likeness, the first decree, let them have dominion. That is the glory and the honor that is given unto you. What has robbed you of the image of God? The image of holiness. The image of love. The image of perfection. Yes, not perfection in knowledge, but perfection in love. Be ye therefore perfect, as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect, complete, mature. What has deprived man of this very image? That is what we're going to contend with tonight. Tomorrow we will proceed in this mystery of the creation of man. Thou hast made him a little lower than the angels who have deprived you of your honor. 
who had deprived you of your glory. Those who contemplate suicide are they aware that even the angels desire to look into these things? Are they aware that they have been made only a little lower than the angels and crowned with glory and with honor? The Lord has crowned you with glory. The Lord The Lord has crowned you with honor. That is the very intention of God in creation. Yes, that is the very intention of God in creation. He says, you have subdued all things, you have set all things under his feet. Under his feet. Hmm, my goodness. Man has been made. And man was dethroned. In Psalms 17. Psalm 17, verse 15. It says, As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. I don't care what the rest of creation thinks, but as for me, the original purpose of God in creation must be accomplished in my life. I will behold thy face in righteousness, and I will not rest until I awake with your likeness. It says, as for me, I will kapaleto shadiakusa. What is the case with you? Are you going to be satisfied without your life showing for the glory and the honor that God intended in creation? Are you going to be satisfied without stepping into that realm of glory that God has ordained for you when he created you. What was the initial purpose of God, the initial thoughts of God when he brought you forth out of your mother's womb? What was the plan and the purpose of God? What has robbed you of that image and has laid your glory in the dust? We go kapatelia porasha kyakuta. Can someone cry to God tonight? I will not set you until I awake with your likeness. I will not set you for less. What has deprived me of the glory, the image, and the likeness of God? What has deprived me of that exalted position that God intended when he created man let them be uprooted and removed from my life it is time for me to occupy that realm hmm. this is a very deep mystery until you awake with the likeness of God, you are not fulfilling the purpose of creation. He says, as for me, I will behold your face in righteousness. I will behold your face in righteousness. And I will be satisfied when I awake with your likeness. I want to carry the likeness of God. I want to carry the image 
image of God. I want to be a representative of the image of God, a representation of the likeness and the image of God. Father, let this work be done in my spirit. Let this work be done in my soul. Let this work be done in my body. Let this work be done in my spirit. I must carry the image of God. I must carry the image of God. I must carry the purpose of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus name we pray. Someone will say. By default. Man. Is already made. In the image of God. That is by our physical appearance. Already we do not need to pray. For us again to be made in the image. By our physical appearance we are already made in the image. And the likeness of God. But. After the fall. Many things went wrong with man. Many things went wrong with man. I'll show you from the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 2. In verse 6. It says, but in one, but one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visitest him? Hmm. Thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and crowned him with glory and honor, and did set him over the works of thine arms. Verse 8, Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all things in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. Look at the last part. It says, But now we see not yet all things put under him. That is, there is a standard that God made in creation under the feet of Adam. All things came in subjection. The Bible says Adam named creation and whatsoever name he gave them, that was the name thereof. Adam had dominion, Adam and Eve, they had the power, they had everything we could ever dream of or imagine. They were complete and perfect. They had the image, the the, the purity, the perfection of God. They had everything. But as soon as the serpent came and deceived, The Bible says, but now, not at creation, now, as you look at your life, what is the reality now compared to what you, God expects for your life, from your life, compared to what God intended when he brought you forth out of your mother's womb, what is that disparity to what you are currently manifesting he said but now we see not all things under his feet but now we see not all things under his feet sickness is triumphing over man affliction is triumphing over man fear is triumphing over man death 
is triumphing over man in the book of first corinthians chapter 15 it says the last enemy that shall be subdued or destroyed is death you see then shall come to pass that word in isaiah oh that death is swallowed up in victory he will swallow up death in victory when he has torn the covering on the face of the nations then death will be swallowed up in victory he says but now we see not all things on his feet creation is rebelling against man you want to cry to God tonight restore my life to the beginning restore my destiny to the beginning oh God of restoration oh God of restoration restore me to the beginning restore me to the beginning I will not be satisfied until I awake with your likeness I will not be satisfied until this glory is restored again I will not be satisfied until there is a fulfillment in my destiny I will not be satisfied I will not be satisfied until it is done let there be restoration oh god of restoration restore my life restore my destiny to as it was on creation as it was about when god created me the original purpose of god the original intention of god the original plan of god let there be a restoration in the name of jesus the serpent that has come and is ruling over you the serpent is supposed to be under your feet the dragon that is now dominating over your family dominating over your finances dominating over your destiny that dragon is supposed to be under your feet god has given man dominion and that dominion we must accept by the power of Calvary Calacosia mm. Jesus this is an intense moment in the spirit I wish I could tell you everything I'm seeing here this is a serious moment the adversary hates this moment like no other because this is what threatens him to his core that man will assume that exalted position again gives the devil ceaseless shivers that man will assume the position of glory and honor give the devil endless choose that man will become the exalted one and be restored to the glory that he lost even the devil fell even the devil fell and he knows that there is no forgiveness for him but man has got forgiveness and can be seated in heavenly places in christ jesus can you cry to god tonight let there be a restoration by the power of calvary let there be a restoration the glory and the honor the glory and the honor that you created me with it's time for me to assume that exalted realm it's time for me to assume that exalted position it's time for creation to submit unto me it's time for creation to submit to my destiny it's time for me to assume that realm of glory it's time for this mortal body to be subject to immortality it's time for me to assume that realm of glory he said but now hmm, my god we see not all things under his feet every spiritual disparity hmm. 
from the intention of God for your life. Every spiritual dissonance from reality. God has said over you, but through a mystery of darkness, now the original speakings of God in your life, did not come to pass. In one of the meetings, we looked at this critically and prayed on the issue where he says, and God said, and it was so, and it was good. Three levels. God said, level one, it was so, level two, level three, it was good. It can be so, but may not be good. So we need to we need to wage war. We spend some time on that in prayer. But can I advise you to pray it again? It will be so, and it will be good. You will conceive it will be so, and by the power of God, the baby will be good. You will not give birth to an abnormal child. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Who is the spiritual disparity between the intention of God? Is this God made man and said, all things under his feet. The first word was let them have dominion. He says, but now, currently, we do not see all things under his feet. As you look at your life, what is the now reality? What is the reality now? When God called you into ministry, he said you will be great. Twenty years have come and gone. What is the reality now? <laughs> when God called you, when you came to know the Lord as your Lord and Savior, He gave you the blueprints and said by this time you will achieve this you will be this you will be that now the years have come and gone and that word has not come to pass we see not all things under his feet that disparity is what we're contending with tonight that by the hand of God it will translate you to that realm of the original purpose of God for your life that by the hand of God it will carry you over this cousin over this gulf of challenges and limitations does either the very purpose of God for manifesting in your life that God will carry you carry you by his mighty power can you cry to God can you cry to God tonight every spiritual disparity from reality from the intention of God in my life let them be taken out of the way let my life ascend and merge and fulfill the heavenly purpose let a paledo so criti paladis eliando reshati ketosa. Let my life be restored. Oh 
God of restoration. Let there be a complete restoration. Every spiritual disparity in the reality, every spiritual disparity from the intention of God for my life, every spiritual disparity brought about by the oppression of the serpent, let them be taken away. Restore me. Restore me. Restore my destiny. Restore my destiny as it was in the beginning. It says, I will be satisfied when I am weak with your likeness. It says, Elohim said, Let us make man in our own image. Let us make man after our likeness and let them have dominion. I must step into that full dimension. That dimension that the devil deprived Adam and Eve from. That dimension that the devil deprived creation from. As for me, I will be satisfied only when I awake with your likeness. As for me, I will be satisfied when I awake with your likeness. As for me, I will be satisfied when I awake with your likeness. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let it be in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name we pray. Hmm. In Jesus' name we pray. The Bible says in Second Kings chapter 5. Now, verse 1. Naaman, the captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man was a great man. Second Kings chapter 5, verse 1. With his master. And he was honorable because by him the Lord has given deliverance unto Syria. And he was a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. That is the spiritual disparity I'm talking about. Honorable man, mighty man of valor. Great deliverance is brought to his nation, but he was a leper. The Bible says, but we see not all things subdued under his feet. Some things have been subdued, but the intention of God was that all things should be subdued. Re creation was not meant to rebel every rebel in creation against my life against my destiny i quash that rebellion under my feet the bible says the god of peace shall bruise satan under your feet shortly even now satan the seed of the woman shall crush shall bruise the head of the serpent every spiritual disparity from reality every spiritual disparity from the intention of god neymar was crowned with glory and honor but he was a leper. Everything was not subdued under him as at yet. Every power that still rebelling against your life. The finances have just refused to submit. Every other thing has submitted to you except this one thing. Are you a leper? This cancer has refused to submit. This sickness has refused to submit and every other thing has submitted he said but now we see not all things subdued under him can you cry to the god of heaven lord i come to you tonight and let all things be subdued under me every rebellion against my life every rebellion against the purposes of God in my destiny. Every 
rebellion against this ministry, every rebellion against my destiny, every rebellion that says no way they want to rule over me, no, 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 that is not the purpose of God in creation, God created me to rule over all the earth and everything that moved and creeped upon the earth, over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, over everything on the land, God has given me dominion. You power that still say you want to rule over me. You are a liar. I subdue you. I bring you into subjection. I bring you into subjection. Let it be known today that evil apostles that even leprosy is brought under your feet. In the name of Jesus. Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. I'm seeing something in the spirit now. The Lord is kicking off a ring from a finger. In the mela prosati kero shalia de so palatia tosaria. What kind of a mystery is this? This ring has sat there for ages, and even when the finger grew bigger, this ring around this point has refused to come out, it just made that place very, very thin. I don't care if this is a spiritual or a physical one, I command every agenda of darkness, every bound and signature that has kept you in this trouble, I command them to be removed right now in the name of Jesus. Whatever covenant that has held you down to darkness, whatever covenant that has held you down to shame, I command that agreement to be broken. The Bible says your covenant with death will not stand and your agreement with hell shall be disannulled I decree in the name of Jesus Christ let that agreement with the signet of the ring given unto you from that occultic world I command that agreement to be broken in pieces I command that agreement to be destroyed right now I break in pieces I will put that ring from your finger. I will put that ring from your fingers. Those demonic rings given unto you, I command them to be uprooted. They will disappear. You will lose your membership. I command those rings to, be, to melt away. I command them to melt away in the name of Jesus. As we look closely, they say Naaman was a leper. Hmm. All this, except leprosy, was under his feet. Great victory, man of influence, man of war, mighty man, honorable man, but a leper. Say, but we see not all things subdued under his feet. We're dealing with the God of restoration. The God of restoration. Hmm. The man came to Elisha. Hallelujah. The prophet looked at him and said, Leprosy is under my feet. I know how to deal with that one. Come over. You will know that there is a prophet in Israel. Man of God, these troubles you are facing in your ministry, perhaps you need to pray this prayer. All things subdued under my feet. 
David said in the book of Psalm 18, he said, It is God that avenged me and subdued the people under me. <laughs> he has made me the head of the Eden, a people that I do not know will serve me. That's the word of the Lord. Elisha told the man, said there is a mystery to this team go and wash in Jordan seven times and you will be whole in verse 14 second Kings chapter 5 verse 14 the Bible says then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan according to the saying of the man of God and his flesh hallelujah came again like unto the flesh of a little child and it was clean this is what i'm talking about that a man even now can be restored as it was in creation his flesh was as the flesh of a little child not a clean adult god did not restore him to the level of a clean adult the bible it means when you looked at Naaman afterwards his skin became soft and fresh like that of a little child can you imagine that so this rebellion when it is subdued under you eventually you will see that god takes you and redeems time it takes you back and you become as it was in creation that barrenness when it's dealt with completely and it comes under your feet God restores unto you the years that the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar, the locust, the great army, the years that they have eaten and stolen from you, God restores it unto you. He says, for your shame, I will give you double. Can someone cry to go tonight? This spiritual disparity, a paleto right back into it must not continue to exist this spiritual this difference from what god intended and what is clearly manifesting in my life it must not continue to exist oh god let there be a restoration if the flesh of Naaman can be restored as that of a little child then surely my health can be restored then surely my finances can be restored then surely my glory can be restored then surely I can be restored again let us make man in our image after our likeness surely I can be restored to the image of God surely I can be restored to the likeness of God surely all things can be subdued under me again Oh God of heaven, let it be right now in the name of Jesus. Surely all things can be subdued under me. Surely this evil can be subdued. Surely this sickness can be subdued. Surely my flesh can be restored. Surely my flesh can be restored again. Oh God. God cause it to happen right now in the name of Jesus. Cause it to happen right now in the name of Jesus. Cause it to happen right now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Hmm. Second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. My goodness but we are with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord 
it says i will behold your face in righteousness righteousness exalted a nation but sin is a reproach to any people he says, so to yourself in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord until he come and rain righteousness upon you. Righteousness is that mystery that causes a change. Righteousness is that mystery that makes us to have the image and the likeness of God. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, we are not beholding evil, we are not beholding the, the ignominy of, 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 of all, all the depravity of Satan. No. We're not beholding Satan. We're not beholding the things of this world. Turn your eyes away from pornography and behold the glory of the Lord. Turn your eyes away from mammon and behold the glory of the Lord. Turn your eyes away from vain glory and the praise of men and behold the glory of the Lord. Turn your eyes away from pleasing men and behold the glory of the Lord. We hold with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. I changed Kalate Patok Sharia. There is a mystery that can cause the change of the leprous flesh of Naaman to become as clean as that of a little child. It says we are changed into that same image, the image of God, from glory to glory, even by the Spirit of the Lord. Let us make man in our image. We can be changed by a mystery as we behold the glory, as we behold this face in righteousness, as we behold the glory of the Lord, as we turn our gaze upon Jesus. That song says, Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face and the taste of this earth will grow strangely dim the desire and the lust for the world will die out of your spirit it will die out of your soul in the light of his glory and grace lord I behold your face tonight let me be changed from glory to glory let me be changed in to the image of God. Let my life be changed. Let my destiny be changed. Let my family be changed. Let my finances be changed. Let my ministry be changed. From glory to glory. From glory to glory. In the name of Jesus. That power that created man in the image image and the likeness of God <laughs> be real in my life tonight and let there be a change let all things now be so dealed under my feet let all man and beast demons or angels subdued under my feet subdued under my feet all sicknesses the Bible says he called his 12 disciples together he gave them power over all sicknesses and diseases and all 
demons, the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils were subject to us through your name. What is this affliction you are having in the night? Let it be known unto you that in creation the devils are subject, <coughs> and in Christ Jesus the devils can be subject unto you through the name of Jesus. He says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you what has been ruling over you he said now we see not yet all things under his feet he says no it's time for you to step into that realm can you cry to God tonight let me step into that realm after the image and the likeness of God where all things are subdued under me where there is a restoration of my flesh where I ascend and I'm changed into that image from glory to glory where I wake with the likeness of God where I behold the face of Jesus where I behold the f- where I behold the face of Jesus, where I behold the glory of the Lord, where I behold the glory of the Lord, where sickness is fed out of my body, where the strangers are afraid and they run out of their secret places, where the arrows of darkness in my body I completely removed and destroyed them. Is so crying to God. Let it happen. Let it happen. Let me get to that exalted position. Let all things be subdued under me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh my goodness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lord God. Jesus, we say thank you. We're going to continue with this prayer tomorrow. And God said, Let us make my in our image and our likeness. As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied. I don't know about others, but as for me, I will insist until I awake with your likeness. I decree over your life tonight by the power of God. Everything that have deprived you of the image and the likeness of God, let them be subdued under your feet perpetually right now in the name of Jesus. For it is written, the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Let it be so. The God of peace bruises sicknesses, bruises lack, bruises shame, reproach, darkness. Bruise them, subdue them under your feet. And you will reign over them forever in the name of Jesus. Be sure to join us tomorrow. It's going to be a powerful time in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lord God. Have a good night rest. Have a good night rest. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Amen.